Amen. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to chapel. Yes, 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 we're here. We're here. Hey, how many of you uh, have ever heard of the October Rule? October Rule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard of it because every year at the beginning of the year, Trig Johnson begins the school year by offering to anyone who will listen the October Rule, right? And the October Rule is based on the fundamental wisdom that when you're in a time of transition, uh, it's, it's good to be cautious to make any big life decisions. And one of those is in regards to dating or relationships. And so the October Rule says that one should put a pause button uh, in college to, uh, in regards to dating until October 1. Is that right? Okay, we all got it together. That's the October rule. So, guess what? It's seven days till October 1, right? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang with me, hang with me. So with that in mind, we as a campus ministry staff thought it would be helpful to do a pre-October chapel series to maybe help us prepare for October. Good idea, right? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. For the next three chapels this whole week, we are gonna have members of our campus ministry team along with their spouses share about their dating experiences as well. So we're gonna ask each one of them the five same questions. I get to monitor this. I'll ask the same five questions and uh, you'll get to listen in. And here's our prayer. This is really our hope and prayer, that as you listen in to their story, that maybe you'll be spurred on to have a deeper and more compelling vision of dating and relationships. That's our hope and prayer. So I'm gonna introduce our first couple. This feels like a TV show, okay. <laughs> so I wanna introduce to you Matt, and Eli Margarone, come on. Where is that from? Where, where is this? Uh, that is our engagement photo. So we, she's wearing a Hope College soccer shirt, represent. And uh, what, what I love about this photo is that she looks the same and uh, me not so much. If you look closely, you can see a sweet hoop earring in that ear um, of mine, so yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so that's the engagement picture. So, Eli, how did the two of you meet? Because you did not go to Hope College. I did not. We met in Colorado. We were working together at this place called the Dale House. It's a group home and community for teens coming out of prison and social services. So we were co-workers first, then we became friends, and then we started dating. Nice. Is that the real story, Matt? Uh, yeah, the real story is... Um, I, there was this thing, Ring by Spring at Hope College. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had great anxiety that after I graduated from Hope that there would be no one else uh, ever that I would find yeah. um, if I didn't marry someone from this place. But then I went to Colorado, and the first day I saw her, boom, it was over. It was <laughs> oh, done. I love it. Now that's the real yeah. story. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So, so you, you met each other, but you guys had dated before. Right? Yeah. And so, what was unique about Matt, Eli, than other folks you had dated before? Yeah, sure. So, Matt valued my relationship with Christ over our own dating relationship. And I had been in previous relationships, and I couldn't say that that was true. Um, but what I always preached about Matt, he was always encouraging me in my faith and always made that our priority. Nice. Besides Eli looking sweet, uh, what else was there about Eli that attracted you? Let's get yeah, honest. I mean, Let's get honest here. Come on, man. You know, uh, when I, I graduated from Hope and I moved to Colorado to work at this ministry, I had been in a, a long-term relationship with a high school uh, girlfriend, a long-term relationship in college, and I told myself that when I moved to Colorado, I wasn't going to date anybody. I was going to get myself straight, and then I saw her, and that was all First over. First day. First, First day, day. yeah. But um, in those previous relationships, I, I think I spent a lot of my time trying to make the other person happy. Um, I put my identity so much in them, in the relationship, um, making sure that they were okay, 
um, and that our relationship was well, that I gave up of myself, my own identity, rather than pursuing God and pursuing what he had for me in my life, I just wanted to make sure the relationship was okay. Yeah. That impacted my friends, that impacted my own self-esteem, and it went downhill, and so I said, hey, I wanna do this differently. I wanna honor her for the woman she is, I wanna pursue her, and I want her to pursue Christ. Um, and that, so that, that's what it was a little bit different, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, you started officially dating, okay, uh, and what, you know, you dated for how long? We dated for around a year. Okay. And then we got engaged and married about seven months later. Yeah. Got it. So what were some of the, the challenges and joys that you faced in those couple years that you were together? Well, living in Colorado, we definitely took advantage of all the outdoor activities. We, one of our first dates was snowboarding in Breckenridge. So we have a lot of memories of just being outside, hiking, exploring. Uh, we definitely were outside a lot, and that carries on in our relationship today. So. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> My joy was just that I got to date someone that's beautiful. Um, oh. She's really funny. We love to go to concerts. We love to have adventures together. We had really great conversations, and that was really, really great. Uh, the challenge is uh, dating is hard. Learning how to be truly yourself in the midst of a relationship is difficult. We had to work through conflict. Um, I wouldn't say that either of us were good at knowing how to do conflict from our upbringing. We, we just didn't know how to do that well. The other thing that we had to get over was our past and the shame of previous relationships and uh, being willing to be vulnerable but also forgive each other was, was huge in the process. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, communication, communication, yeah. communication. You, you never hear it enough, right, right. in relationships and uh, how important that is uh, for all relationships but for yours as well too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so uh, where did faith come in? Because a lot of times I've seen it with uh, couples who, are, who love Jesus, all of a sudden they can kind of get compartmentalized you know, in the relationship. Uh, how did that play out for the two of you guys? How did faith get integrated into your dating relationship? Because that's always a challenge. Sure. And we met working for a Christian ministry, so we were surrounded by faith. Um, but one really early on, one of our first things we started is we started a prayer journal, and we still have it today, uh, where we would just write prayers to God, and um, we would pass it back and forth and share scripture, and it's just kind of a way that we would incorporate faith into our relationship. Yeah, on one of our first dates, we bought that journal and we just began to write back and forth to each other and to God and just uh, share that. And so I'd been in relationships with people that followed Jesus before, but we really wanted to make it a priority in everything that we did. Uh, our first Valentine's Day, we were backpacking on the side of a mountain and um, it was a two day trip. Um, I was in a tent soloing on one part of the mountain, Mount Princeton in Colorado, and then she was a little further down the mountain soloing. And I spent my whole day whittling a log for her. And uh, she went, there was a cross on the top of the mountain. She hiked up to the cross. I whittled this log, hiked to her camp to set it for her and didn't meet up with her. And it clicked in my brain, man, if I would have hiked to the cross, I would have met her there. But I tried to go to her to please her to do something for her. And so that clicked in my our relationship that, hey, I need to pursue Jesus as hard as she's pursuing Jesus. And if we do both do that, we'll meet each other there. That's a cool story. Yeah. what you ever do with that whittled thing he gave you? Okay, so we had to collect our own firewood and I took a photo of it. Oh my gosh. But. No, no yeah. way. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Okay, I gotta hear it. I gotta hear it. I had visions that this log would be on our mantle for years to come, but she burnt it <laughs> that day yeah. for heat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's snow on the ground, camping There's in the snow. snow. I'm from South Carolina. We, we don't snow yet. Camping but she snow. took a picture of it. So if you come to our house, there's a framed picture of this log. Yeah, that you can see. it was burned that night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Love it. Great story. Great story. Love that vision of if you would pursue Jesus as passionately as she, you would have met each other. That's a great vision. That's a great vision. Uh, so our time's cooking right here. So uh, what do you wish, what do you two wish somebody would have told the two of you when you were dating? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. What do you wish? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're looking at each other. All right. All right. What do you wish 
Someone would have told you when you were dating. Yes. Okay. So someone did tell, give me a very good piece of advice, which um, I've held on to. But you want to be with a person who cares more about your relationship with Christ than y'all's own dating relationship. So that Say was that. something. So Eli, again. you said it too fast. Oh, sorry. Say it slow. No, no, you, yes. don't, you don't have to apologize. But say it because it's so important. Yes. It's so crucial. Say it again. You want to be with a person who cares more about your relationship with Christ than y'all's dating relationship. That's, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. Great, great counsel. Mm-hmm. Great counsel. And, and you live by that. You mm-hmm. said, I'm not compromising. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Trigg mentioned it on Friday, the glory of God is man fully alive. And I think God wants us to live fully alive in our relationships. That means to not settle for who we are, to be yourself. Don't try to be someone else for the person you're with. Be yourself and pursue God's call on your life and also passionately want the other person to have a deep relationship with Jesus. The reason we're together is because Charlie Patton, when she was a senior at college, said that, that to her. Yeah. And we met because of that. And that w- our, both of our previous relationships did not look like that. And I think that was what was different about our relationship. So. Wow, awesome. Hey, we hope that regardless of where your relational status is right now, whether, you're, you, whether you are dating, whether you just broke up, whether, whether you've never dated before or whether you've dated multiple times with some good and some bad, we hope that this series, again, will spur something on to give you a, a deeper, more compelling vision of dating and relationships. You like it so far? You think so? Can't wait? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So we're, we're not going to uh, announce our next two mystery couples. You'll have, to, you'll have to come on Wednesday and Friday to hear more. But Matt, would you pray us out? Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, thank you for today. Lord, I pray for each and every person in this room and those all around campus that you would be with them, that you would help them know who they are and whose they are, and that you would help them grow into the people that other people would want to be like and be with. In your holy and precious name, amen. Amen. Go in peace.